as a very special treat to you and the theater community here in Vancouver, Lucia, a new musical comedy, is on its way May 21st to the 24th at Performance Works on Granville Island. And for tickets, you can go to thebroadwaychorus.com. Now, it's written by none other than the most amazing writer and director, Ashley Lambert Maberly, who is from the Broadway Chorus, and he is the one who founded that group, and he's done about uh, 30 productions almost, and musical direction by, for this play is uh, Sarah J. Smith as well. And tonight in the studio, I haven't even counted them at 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. I'm glad I did my times tables. And uh, with us this evening, just to say a quick hello before we get into the singing, is none other than the writer-director and the artistic director, Ashley Lambert Maberly, with us. Hi, Ashley. How are you? I'm really good. Thank you for having us, Sky. This is fun. You can't tell because this is radio, but we're sharing a mic. So Sky talks in the mic. He ducks away. I talk in the mic, then I duck away. I'm ducking away now. It's his turn. <laughs> you know, I went to the dance center as I was doing some postering and happily for you guys uh, the last few days. And I went to the dance center thinking, well, you know, they do do a lot of dancing. You do mostly singing. We do dancing. We got dances. I know. <laughs> I went in there thinking that. And I went up and I said, do you mind if you put up a poster in one of your beautiful boxes that everyone sees? And they were like, oh, well, we're not quite sure. We'll have to look at the poster because it's mostly for dancers. And I was like, well, they do lots of dancing in it. Actually, I've, seen, I've been to their place. Well, I have to put it through and they'll decide. And so hopefully they'll put it up for you. But uh, Lucia is a very special play to you, Ashley. Um, can you tell us a little bit as to why? Because you're, you're brimming here. Oh, yeah, well, I, I, I started writing it about uh, 14 years ago, so it's taken a little while for to actually get to the production stage. I'm glad I waited this long because I have the most amazing cast. <laughs> Let's hear you. Okay. Yeah, 90% of the amazing cast is in the room with me. Um, it's based on uh, the novel by E.F. Benson called Queen Lucia, which led off the whole Lucia and Map series of novels, which um, I don't know if you've discovered them, but you should really might want to give it a try. They're hilarious. Um, they're incredibly trivial. They're about nothing at all. They're sort of like Seinfeld in the 1920s. Uh, it's being turned into a major BBC uh, television series next year with Miranda Richardson as Miss Map and um, somebody else as Lucio, whose name I cannot remember, but she's done heaps of things. And so it should be quite fun. But they don't sing and dance in the BBC upcoming television series version. So if you want your singing and dancing, Lucia, you have four chances. Next week, May 21st to 24th, that's it. Don't wait for the television series. No singing, no dancing. You will be disappointed. <laughs> Although I'm sure Miranda Richardson will do a good job of acting. <laughs> Maybe Netflix will pick up on you guys and say, all right, let's go. <laughs> all right, so now the Broadway course is unique among Vancouver's theatrical troops as you mount fully staged musicals where the script is new but the songs have been heard before. Gathering show tunes, occasional movie hits, or great pop classics, they are put to new use. And their specialty, or your specialty, is, of course, songs from the Broadway stage, old songs, new songs, songs you've never heard before, and songs you want to sing again and again. So clearly your life has always been about musical theatre. Ashley, were you in musical theatre in school? I'm afraid I was in musical theatre in uh -huh. school. I started in grade one as one of the many children uh, from the old woman who lived in the shoe oh. in a show called Carnival Capers where they didn't let us learn anything other than the last song and even then they didn't really teach it to us so just let us come on stage and be little children and I thought, this sucks, I totally want to sing like the entire score. <laughs> so I talked to my dad who was a teacher at high school into letting me appear in one of the high school productions so I was actually a pit singer in in Review 73, I'm that old, uh, and it was wonderful because it was a review of Broadway songs, which I had never heard before. So I got to listen to Broadway tune after Broadway tune and learn an awful lot about what had been going on up to that point, where the most recent one was Godspell. We sang Day by Day. That's how long ago 1973 was. And then I just kept it up ever since. I love musical theater. I love any kind of uh, theater, any kind of narrative, really. I love movies. I love reading. I love theater. I love musical theater, opera, ballet, if it's got a good story. I think your love for theater really, really emanates so strongly that everyone in this room is smiling really truthfully. <laughs> and they know that your premises of the Broadway course is all about sharing and about inclusion and uh, inclusivity. And that is just something that shines through to you uh, as a producer of theater here in Vancouver, and specifically musical theater. I think it's just gorgeous because, you know, there is musical theater in Vancouver, but not this level where it's so inclusive and not maybe as 
Well, what I wanted was to have a situation where people who really want to do theater but don't want to give up their lives mm -hmm. can still do the theater. It might not feel right now when we're one week away from performing that <laughs> they don't have to give up their lives for it. But trust me, <laughs> if, if you were in a different show, it would have been a lot worse because it's every day, you know, on the weekends for two months solid, and then you perform for three weeks, and you really don't get to see your kids or your husband or your wife or your partner. It's just not. not and the way they treat you, that's what everyone talks about. It's like, oh, no. God. Those directors are lovely people. <laughs> of course they are. You are. But, um, you know, there's a little bit of reputation out there for, you know, harshness or whatever. Have you ever heard of Cirque du Soleil, for example? <laughs> I've talked to some of the people on there. They love it, but at the same time, the behind-the-scenes time, the behind-the-scenes stuff can be a bit, uh, bit much. Anyway, you guys are coming up with a phenomenal Lucia musical here. Now, there's something about this that's very special because, again, 14 years in the making. So this is your rendition of... The, the the piece. So, uh, have you rewritten the songs, or are they totally fresh songs? Or oh, what did you do? They're totally fresh songs. It's an original score. Um, it has a bit of a 1920s feel, but uh, it's really you know the Broadway idiom. Um, some of the uh, the songs I'm having a bit of fun with because. For instance, yoga figures quite prominently in the plot, and so we sing a big... Did you say yoga? Yoga. It's an Indian philosophy which does wonders for colds. In the 1920s? In the 1920s. Oh, I didn't know. Yeah, the, 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 <laughs> I thought that was the 70s. Thing. Yeah, oh, look, uh, it's yoga. That, everything old is new again. When, <laughs> yes. you, when you, It might have been said in the 1920s, but a lot of their concerns are the sorts of things that people of today would still find... Well, I mean, ridiculously annoying, but, <laughs> <laughs> but modern and up-to-date and ridiculously annoying. Beautiful. All right, well, we have a musical treat for you because everyone came down here, and the studio is actually quite hot, and it's going about to get much, much hotter, but we have left the door open. Our air conditioning has broken down at the station, but we're moving, so why spend the money on something when we're moving, right? So it's like... <laughs> All right, so does anybody have cell phones on, by the way? I just led by example there. <laughs> Please mute your cell phone if by chance you have forgotten. Uh, but you're all in musical theater, so you know to do that automatically, right? Right. All right, so Lucia coming to the Theater Performance Works on Granville Island, a wonderful space to enjoy theater, and the broadwaycourse.com is where you can get your tickets. Run down and get them quickly online, or if you prefer to pay cash, at the door is fine, and the doors open an hour before. Now, what time do they start, by the way? Oh, the box office shows. opens at 7, and the show's at 8. 8, okay, fantastic. May 21st to the 24th, starting next week. And if you see the posters around town, it's absolutely hilarious because it really captures, well, one of the posters anyways, uh, Lucia is there. Now, let's just talk just a tiny bit about Lucia. Because Lucia, I don't know if you say it that way in Italian, but uh, she is British, actually. And she yes. thinks she's Italian, and she kind of behaves that way. And her friend, who is? Uh, the, I, that's Mr. Georgie, Lucia, and her best friend, Mr. Georgie. Lucia is really Mrs. Philip Lucas, Emmeline Lucas, but she calls herself Lucia because she loves Italian so much. Um, can't really speak it, but she speaks it better than anyone else in her village. So <laughs> that's all you have to do is keep one step ahead of everyone else. So they can't trip her up. She can say a few extra words. They think she's Fluent. She tries to pass herself off as that. Does she run around saying, I'm the only Italian in the village? Um, she doesn't <laughs> quite say that. <laughs> well, I don't know quite how far gone she got with this. But uh, So her friend, as you said, uh, does he basically put up with this or go along with it? Her friend puts up with just about everything. He thinks she's adorable. <laughs> and um, the major plot tension is that Lucia is used to running the town and having everything be the way she would like it to be. And then all of a sudden, somebody arrives in town who doesn't necessarily do things Lucia's way and is a potential rival for Mr. Georgie's affections. So it's a bit of a, a love triangle in completely platonic terms because Georgie's as gay as you can get in the 1920s. Oh, so there is a love connection here. I was wondering if we'd get to that. Now, in the studio, actually, with us, we're graced with the presence of Lucia herself, in fact. <laughs> and uh, we'll just pretend she's got the wig and the whole garb on. She's looking very skeptical about plot summary. Introduce her, <laughs> slip up to the mic there just for this a This is second. Jocelyn McDougall, who's portraying oh, oh, Lucia. Mike, you, Mike. you can have your own mic. Yep. We have, there's two of us in this one. Why are you trying to take our mic away? Get your own I mic. I just wanted to get in on the fun. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good afternoon. The it's love so, triangle thing, that's what it is. It's so kind of you to have us all in the studio today, and we're really, really excited about putting on this show, so I hope that all your uh, engaged and kind listeners want to come down and uh, get involved and take a look at what we've spent so much time and energy and laughter uh, <laughs> putting together and I just want to say thanks so much to Ashley for having written this show it's so much fun it's so exciting and it's such a great privilege to be able to put on stage something that he's spent so many years uh, 
loving and putting together, and now he's ready to put it forward. So we're all, I think I speak for tout le monde. Uh, if only I knew how to say that in Italian, it'd be so much better. Uh, when I say we're fake all it, very proud. It. We're all very proud to be yeah. part of Tutti this Tutti le monde or something. Yeah. Yeah. So a quick question on the spot. Uh, how is he like as a writer-director, specifically director, I suppose? Um, I have to say he's fantastic, particularly because of the ethos that he's bringing to having put this group together. Uh, just to echo what he was talking about earlier, about giving people who love theater and want to be a part of theater an avenue to do that without giving up their whole lives. Certainly, that is precisely the reason why I'm involved, personally. Um, and one of the things I think that's so wonderful is that he really gets to know um, and appreciate the skills and likes and dislikes and talents and different things that all of the various members can bring to the table and actually works in quite a collaborative way um, to build a production that everybody wants to be a part of. So uh, I wouldn't work with anyone else. <laughs> I think he's speaks for everyone in this room because I'm watching their eyes and their smiles and not anyone there's no one here that isn't smiling from cheek to cheek so um, I would think that was a hundred percent there Ashley <laughs> well, mine's sort He's of turning a, I'm an embarrassed you. smile as people say nice things about me not that I'm unused to people saying nice things about me but but when they do I always get an embarrassment. well you know what nice things are earned they certainly are and uh, congratulations to you Ashley for uh, following through with the um, you know what you've set out to create with the Broadway course in terms of you know what is our what is our underpinnings? You know, who are we? What are we about? And living by that and being true to that. So that's gorgeous. Thank you. All right. So theater coming your way. And we have some live music here. And we have, again, how many did I say? 14? Something 18. like that? 18 of us here in this room. And I'm going to stand back. They're going to take it away. These are songs. And please do uh, two, three songs, whatever you like. Uh, what time is it? Okay. How much, how much time do you have? Oh, we can fill it up. Sounds good? Yeah. Okay. So we're going to keep going because we want you to get a taste of Lucia and maybe a little hint of, you know, what Lichi is all about, perhaps, in a song. We'll see about that in a moment. So Actually. what, what um, the, Lucia is really about the community and the effect that Lucia has on the community, so I think it's appropriate to start with a song we all sing, uh, led off by the gorgeous Angela Tandro, who's playing Mrs. Antrobus. Am I and the only actual Brit in the show? Yes, <laughs> yes we, we thought we'd start it with our best foot forward, an actual Brit, not a fake British accent. This is the real deal. If you think it sounds <laughs> fake, you're wrong. She's really it really is genuine. <laughs> really is genuine. <laughs> and uh, she, uh, her character runs the hotel, well, not hotel, the inn in town. And we're all going to gather outside her inn to have a good midday gossip, essentially. So I think we should. All right. Take You're away. listening to 100.5 FM here in Vancouver, Canada. Cooperadio.org is where you can check out the archives and, by the way, peruse them afterwards. You can't always listen when you want to. So you can always go to the archives and pick it out then and uh, do some perusing on the 100 plus shows that we have, including fruit salad and tonight's very special Lucia performance a new musical comedy coming May 21st to the 24th you're listening to Fruit Salad my name's Sky your host for tonight and with us is pretty much 90% of uh, the musical cast for Lucia again coming to the stage May 21st 24th performance works on Granville Island tickets thebroadwaychorus.com please take it away here they are the Broadway Chorus singing Lucia songs from Lucia To wisdom for its subtle charms, we welcome them with open arms and hope they like their stay. In summer, when the tourists come, we know they long for something quaint. We give them layers of peeling paint to keep their spirits gay. Our village inn is very old, its inner walls have grown so mold. And if it were just slightly Who knows what 
mind of a guy. Tell me what's new with us today. Daisy has a guest in for him. Staying at a home. He's a Brahmin. He's a Brahmin from the Nauris. And he's teaching her to bend. And the cook has given notice. Daisy did something to offend. Could the Brahmin from the Nauris be more than a friend? News, news. Can you tell me the news? What is happening here in Mizzle today? If you got information, then you are so spreading the word. Tell me what's new. you Sam? Not at all. Sam, who used to have that large dog called? I haven't got a clue. Well, he quarreled with that fellow you know. No, I don't know who. Well, that fellow sprained his ankle. How exciting can it be true? Let's, Let's hear, hear the, the news. 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 Can we dance with the news? What, what is, is happening, happening here in Rizzum today? If you got news, tell me first. Good or bad, I'm prepared for the worst. What's new in Rizzum? What's true? What does she say? But it's a secret. Do go on. She's expecting someone famous. Someone famous coming here. And she'll soon be here to greet her. It's a woman who'll appear. Keep it strictly private, Georgie. No one will hear. Have no I got news? News. news? news. Can you tell me the news? What is happening here in Rizzum today? Tell me all. There's a what, what song was that again? That's called News News, surprisingly. <laughs> <laughs> news News, well, that's news to me. Lucia, a new musical comedy you're enjoying here right on Co-op Radio, coopradio.org. Check it out online. And 100.5 FM is where you're tuned into. Please stay tuned for more because we have more musical songs coming from the Broadway course and their wonderful rendition of Lucia, 14 years in the writing. And all of these songs are written by Ashley Lambert Maberly with much love and adoration for this story story of Lucia, uh, as it's uh, it's been around for decades since the early 20s, I guess, around, around, the, around then, was it? The original Yeah, authors? the first book was written in 1920, mm -hmm. and uh, it was incredibly popular. It spawned six sequels, and then there was a bit of a revival of it in the 80s, of a revival of interest. Uh, it became a miniseries on Channel 4. Tom Holt started writing sequels to it, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, it's just, it's time has come again. It's, and now it's landed in Vancouver, just about to May 21st to the 24th, again. A musical that is not to be missed. And if you have caught the Broadway course in a production before, you'll know. You'll know why it's important to go on down and support them because they're so much fun. And these are people that come together for the love of theater community. And they truly have their own lives, but they also can, you know, get involved in theater but not be drowned in it because sometimes that's the way because it just becomes your life and you don't have a life left. Theater is your life, so, um, which, you know, is a trade off for some as well. But uh, that's intense. This is more fun and community building, and let's just have a good time. And and make good theater at the same time. Musical theater, that is. So, Lucia, here's another song from them. You're listening to Fruit Salad on 100.5 FM. Again, it is down at Performance Works on Granville Island. Doors are at 7 p.m., and the play starts, or theater starts, at 8 p.m. So you can go on down. Get your tickets ahead of time, though. Or if you prefer to pay cash, you can go to the doors around 7, 7.30 and pick up your tickets then. But it's quite a popular group, so I would get your tickets quickly. Here we go. When I met my husband and we planned to settle down, we settled in this most amazing town. Strangers look upon you and find you sleepy and quaint, but if they got to know you, they would faint. For there's never a dull day, never an unmet yearning, never a roadblock in my way. I do what I want to do. I know all I need to know, and I share my extensive learning. Some of my students may seem slow, but they do what I tell them to. My garden contains each flower that Shakespeare named in his plays. We say oh reservoir instead of au revoir, and I coined that phrase. I work at self-improvement. I've mastered all the arts. 
I paint with watercolors and I bake banana tarts. So there's never a dull day, never a quiet morning. Their wish is my command, so I obey. I get no rest, but I don't protest, for there's never a dull day. discussing Dante's Purgatorio next week. No, I'm afraid I can't help you with your earthenware. Too busy. My house is quite authentic. I've added antique glass. You can't see through the window. But I think that gives them class. There's never a dull day. Never a dull day. I started up a gallery. We paint, we draw, we. We've not even on salary. It's quite hard work. But I do not shirk. So there's never a dull day. More, 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 please, more, more. <laughs> I know you have more. Now, that was a song by Lucia herself, as you could tell with the tiny Italian accent there. She's really trying hard, you know. So how much time do we have, Sky? Keep it going. Just keep, keep it going. Keep it going. Yeah. a couple more? Well, we wondered if we could do a little bit of a scene. Ooh, we thought that would be fun. That. It's, it's not all singing, all dancing. Occasionally, we talk. Occasionally, we do. Uh, about the most ridiculous things in the world. So I thought it would be nice to pick perhaps the most politically incorrect scene, uh, the one where we discuss Daisy's Indian. <laughs> Being that it's co-op radio, it's entirely appropriate for you to try and do that. You see, I'm trying my best to do a little bit of an English accent Oh, that's very good. I've that's got my crumpets here. I'll, be, I'll just be <laughs> eating over here. Where did Sky go? Me? Who's this guy? Yes, yes, yes. 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 I'll just clean myself <laughs> up. Talk away, talk away amongst yourselves. So um, this, uh, the, the initial premise uh, of Act One is Lucia arrives from London and discovers that her neighbor and, and good friend Daisy has acquired a, an Indian, a, a Brahmin from Benares, and he's teaching her yoga, and this is a surprise to her, and essentially that's the scene. How odd. I don't recall Daisy having an Indian. Yes, he's new. Giorgino mio, you must tell me everything. Well, it's very mysterious. How you excite me. Presto, presto. Well, oh, had Daisy become Christian science before you left? Indeed. It was that summer cold which drove her to it. And wasn't doing a thing for her. She had sniffles for days. Too strong for Christian science, I expect. Well, she went to Brighton for a week. She was ill when she left and ill when she returned. But when she was there, she struck up a conversation with a woman on Church Street. And that woman took one look at Daisy and her cold and recommended yoga. Mm -hmm. It's an Indian philosophy which does wonders for colds, and that you need a teacher. That's what Daisy's book said. She bought it off the woman on Church Street. And then she wrote to the publishers, and asking for a teacher, a week later the guru came. Guru, that's yoga for teacher. And he said he had a calling. A calling? To Daisy of all people? Surely the publishers sent him? Oh, surely. But she makes it seem much more mystical than that. Imagine... A guru landing on Daisy's doorstep, and I missed it. She says he's a Brahmin of the very highest caste from Benares, and he's teaching her the true path and fancy breathing, and she claims her cold is quite gone. Well, it has been three weeks. Mm. And you said that she might let the guru teach you the path? She said that she might, yes. But that hasn't happened yet. No. And she's had this guru for how long? Well, since Monday last week. Don't you see, Georgie? She'll never let it happen. <gasps> no! Yes! Oh. I hate to speak ill of her, Georgie, but Daisy is an ungenerous person. You know how she never invites me to dine when her friend the bishop is over. Well, you were rather rude to him the one time you met. I didn't know who he was. Oh, this is dreadful. Daisy hoarding the guru in that tiny spare bedroom and possibly loaning him out? No, no, no. Why, if I had a guru... I'd have regular classes and be gracious and unselfish about it all. That does sound like you. Did you see her with him just now? Why, 
as she practically dragged him away when he was obviously trying to reach out for me. Mm. It was a cry for help, Georgie, a plea for rescue. But what can you do? He's Daisy's guru. I won't re repeat my mistake with the bishop. I'll be polite as anything. Oh, Georgie, I'll have a party. And I'll invite Daisy and her guru and everybody else. And when he sees my home and compares it to Daisy's mm. and how charming I am and how, well... He knows all about her. Mm. And I'll have Grosvenor prepare delicious delicacies. There's something very hidden to <gasps> We'll have quantities of beef. Mm. I know they simply adore cows over there. Oh, and brandy. He likes brandy. I saw him order a bottle and say, would you have the very great goodness to put this brandy on the account of Mrs. Quantock? Thank you, Georgie. I wouldn't want him to remain with Daisy just to get brandy. Oh, Georgie, it's fate. It really is. Here I am, fresh from London, anxious for something diverting and cultural, and here it is, a party on Friday so we can steal Daisy's guru. <laughs> End scene. <laughs> <laughs> You're listening to an excerpt of the play Lucia coming to the stage. It's a new musical comedy, comedy here in Vancouver, May 21st to 24th. With us, of course, is the director, writer of this beautiful play, producer as well, and he's actually in one of the lead parts as well. Ashley Lambert Maberly is with us. It's because I'm so humble and self-effacing. <laughs> <laughs> you're terribly honest. You, do, you really are. We also have Lucia here as well, if you could reintroduce her. And this is Jocelyn McDougall playing Lucia. Good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> and everyone else, everyone else say hi. Hi! Oh, no, no that doesn't sound British at all. Try it with your accent. Hello! Hello. Oh, so much better. <laughs> See, I was going to get everyone to say their name on a one, two, three count. Do you want to try that one? We've got uh, 18 people here, so one, two, three. <laughs> that was a really long, drawn-out name, wasn't it? <laughs> All right, so you're listening to Fruit Salad on 100.5 FM here in Vancouver. Don't forget to check out our archives if you go to cooperadio.org, and you can listen to the lovely songs over and over until May 21st, and then get on down to Performance Works and see it live for yourself, because it's going to be a spectacle that you will not forget, and you'll quite likely want to go back again and again, because it's on for four days. Again, this is 14 years in the making, and the songs, again, Ashley, were written by yourself. These are all original songs inspired by... Lucia, the very famous, and decades of um, brewing, shall we say, that has gone on with this uh, particular famous play and book. It started with a book, and then it became a miniseries, I think you said in the 80s or something like that. Mm -hmm. And now it's landed in Vancouver, or it's about to. So uh, we're going to enjoy some more, perhaps, excerpts or songs. Okay. Uh, take it away. Well, uh, I need about uh, 10 seconds okay. worth of setup so I can select the song. And I'm, I'm, my pianist is unfortunately, or fortunately, depending how you look at it, playing at Broadway and Broadway on Broadway, which is sort of a piano <laughs> piano bar version of people who come sing in a coffee shop and come sing Broadway songs, and she's there. So I have robot Sarah right now. I, <laughs> as, as essentially, programmed. essentially, I've programmed it all into my keyboard so that it can play without her. We need her. She's precious and wonderful and fabulous, and any time we screw up, she'll follow us, and robot Sarah doesn't do that. But as long as we don't screw up, everything should be fine. Sounds good. All right, well, I will uh, delay just for a second. Here. So once again, you're enjoying the incredible music. Now we've got 18 people, almost the full cast from the musical Lucia, right here in the studio. It's quite hot, but you know they're used to the bright lights and the uh, the heated stages. So they're going to take it away with some more music here. And uh, the piano, I think, is warmed up and ready to go. Again, you're listening to Fruit Salad on 100.5 FM. Do stay tuned for Gender Queries at 8 p.m. 9 p.m. is Arts Rational Arts and Entertainment in Vancouver. 10 p.m. is Better Days and at midnight, it is Art of Beats, electronic music at its best from midnight to 2 a.m. 100.5 FM is where you're tuned into. Here is the cast, more or less, from Lucia, singing just for you. So this last song is called Covent Garden, and it's Mr. Georgie singing about the first time he saw the famous prima donna Olga Bracely. Covent Garden when she was there I had no expectations then I'd never heard her sing before I didn't know her name I took my seat at Covent Garden 7th row 
the lights grow dim and the orchestra starts playing and she enters in the darkness and she sings I heard her sing I sat at Covent Garden and I stared one pool of light around her now she didn't move Across the stage, she simply stood her ground, and then her voice at Covent Garden seemed to float. It's loud and clear, but as delicate as petals, and the notes begin ascending, and she'd sing. I heard her sing. As if she sang for me only She sang at Covent Garden And I was there It's only been eleven years So I remember everything I heard her sing I heard her sing. The gorgeous voice of Ashley himself, Ashley Lambert Maberly, the director, the writer, the producer, and of course one of the leads in his most favorite play, Lucia. But I don't choreograph. We've got other people doing that. <laughs> See, he let something happen elsewhere. And also you have a musical director. That's true. I'm not playing the piano. <laughs> Who is none other than Sarah J. Smith? She's not here this she's evening. She's not here. She's fabulous. Okay. I trust you. I trust you. All right. So Lucia is coming up for you. Performance works on Granville Island. Do we have one more diddy, or are we, are we about done? No, I think we, we're diddied out. I don't know if you can be diddied out. But <laughs> oh, too but much I want of a more. Good, too much of a good thing, especially when you're unused well, to you it. <laughs> <laughs> you got to keep them wanting. Keep them wanting. Yeah. Keep them curious. All right. So Lucia coming to the stage. Performance works on Granville Island, and it's such a wonderful spot. Of course, if you're a theatre buff yourself, you'll know that that's one of the better places in town in terms of community theatre. It's such a great venue. Well, there's lots of room, so it's a handy place for a cast of 25 to be able to bumble around on stage and not crash into each other so often. Very true. And also, Granville Island experience before and or after is also a, a lovely bonus. Now, there's also a wonderful room in there before you go into the... In, is there an intermission in this way? Oh, yes, there's definitely intermission. And, yeah. There's some wine and beverages and things like that for you to enjoy. All right, so this is written lovingly by yourself and directed Ashley Lambert Maberly. And uh, again, A Labor of Love, Lucia, all the songs are written by yourself and uh, inspired by that or Lucia herself. Where did the inspiration come for the, the song content? Oh, God, well, wow, writing songs. Um, they just come to me. I don't want to sound like crazy person, but you know, you just think uh, in terms of the structure of the show, what song should happen in what place, and then they, you, I come up, me personally, I come up with the title, and I try to fit the title onto a melody, uh, sit at the piano, noodle around with chords, see what, what works, um, and then, it, it, I don't know, they kind of write themselves. It, it, there's a lot of tweaking, a lot of editing, a lot of hard work with the score. Uh, there's one thing to write a melody and lyrics, anybody can do that. Children do that. They make up songs, but you don't require that the children sit down and write a piano score for the accompaniment for the song they just made up. So that's the hard part. Well, 14 years it took to put this together because it was a journey in, in itself, as you said, the songs were coming to you. Uh, but you were also producing many, many other productions at the same time. That, yes. So it was kind of a hobby on the side. <laughs> it was just not having the time to, if I really sat down and knuckled, uh, uh, knuckled down, I could have gotten it finished a lot sooner. Well, but plus you have a full-time a job, etc. Yeah. My goodness. <laughs> and apparently, I don't know if this has inspired your trip, but you're off to Italy itself uh, very soon. Yes, as soon as the show closes, about two weeks after that, off to Venice and Florence and Rome. I'm very lucky. And I'm very jealous, but <laughs> I'll contain it. Anyway, I want to thank all of you for coming down. You're absolutely fantastic. Say goodbye, everybody. 
the gorgeous voice of the Broadway Chorus right here from Vancouver, thebroadwaychorus.com. Check them out. That's where you can get your tickets. And if you prefer to pay cash, well, you can just go an hour before. 7 o'clock are the doors. 8 p.m. are the show nights, or the show time. May 21st to the 24th on gorgeous Van- uh, Vancouver's Granville Island Performance Works. And again, thank you so much to the cast for coming down. Well, we've got 90% of them here anyway, so I appreciate it very much. It was a gorgeous treat. Thank, thank you. you so much.